one of the most informative as well as exhausting days that we've had in the history of, of this annual conference, and many thanks to you. And to all of you, I encourage you to join us again tomorrow, bright and early. The bell will toll at 9 a.m. Opening for transfer pricing with Miller Williams and Jeff Schaefer, as well as our border sessions with Jessica LaCroix, Lori Tanous, Cindy Todd of Cherniak, and Katie Friedman. And then we will conclude with the planning session that I talked about uh, earlier today. So while we are in the home stretch, so to speak, there are still a number of informative sessions and extremely important sessions to the overall conference topic. Now I know this evening as we pause for a moment to honor Henry King, we've already broken Henry's rule. We are running a little bit late today and as he was a stickler for the time. I mentioned yesterday that this was a period of mixed emotions for a number of us as we were starting this conference for the first time without Henry. On the one hand, Henry wasn't with us and we discussed throughout this weekend the ways that we are honoring his legacy both within the law school in terms of physical developments and I hope you've had the opportunity as Dean Rawson uh, advised to stop by our li library to see the permanent display to Henry and through a number of initiatives to honor his legacy in terms of his name. On the other hand, as we witnessed this weekend, this was also the new era of our institute with the appointment of our new co-chairs and last night set the perfect tone for not only this conference and our, con and our institute in terms of Governor Blanchard and Minister Peterson and their leadership of our institute and they were here bright and early at 7.30 for our executive committee already planning next year's conference. Now those of you that knew Henry knew that he loved the morning. Henry was up every day at 4 a.m., read a few papers, and some of you were on the receiving end of those 5.30, 6 o'clock, and for me, the 6.30 a.m. call every day for the 15 years that I knew him. Dan, did you, did you read this in the New York Times? And well, trust me, I wasn't. I didn't read it <laughs> at that moment. And the stories are legendary when I worked at the United States District Court for the Northern District of Ohio, me running through the halls to answer the phone at 6.30 in the morning when it was Henry. The marshals still have it all on videotape. The U.S. marshals would be diving for the phone because if I missed the call, it would roll to voicemail and a few minutes later it'd be Henry. Dan, I'm worried about you. Why aren't you in the office at 6.30? Or are, you, are you taking a day off? But as much as Henry loved the morning and savored every day, the evening was his time to shine. And while throughout this weekend we have mentioned tribute to Henry, and as we move forward with our institute, we pause in the present to reflect on the past. That Henry's, some of my favorite moments of Henry, and I've said this on a number of occasions, were sharing a drink with him in an airport or on an airplane, and there's some famous stories with that. I, I know a number of you have heard this, but one of my favorite of all time is when Mike Robinson and a number of our, Larry Herman and Jim, we hosted an event in Toronto in March. And there was a snowstorm, but Henry and I had to be in Ottawa. He had an honorary consul meeting, and I forget what, what I was doing up there. But it was a typical March Ottawa day. There were about two feet of snow on the ground, and we were sitting in the Ottawa airport, and we had to get to Toronto for a Canada U.S. Law Institute event. And as we were boarding the plane, what the, they announced that this would be the last plane to leave Ottawa that day. And as we were sitting on the tarmac, the, the, the captain said, uh, there will be a 50% chance that this plane lands in Toronto, meaning that this plane may be coming back to Ottawa. Who knows if it could land in Toronto. And as we we're in the air, I just hear Henry laughing hysterically. And he looks, and I said, Henry, what's so funny? And he said, at my age, 50% chances aren't so bad. <laughs> so, uh, that was one of the countless stories that we all share about Henry, but some of my favorite moments were this time of the night during our annual conference in the 13 years uh, that I've been around this conference. We're at the end of the evening, and you guys may remember for a number of years we had a panel and we stopped doing the Saturday evening panel because we would bring wine and the Q&A was always fun to read the transcript for. <laughs> but walking Henry back to the, over to the Glidden House, and here was an individual in, in his seventh and eighth decade of his life that was just inspired and would say, did you hear what Dick Cunningham said today? Did you hear what Michael Robinson, Dan, next year we have to do this. And he was invigorated in a way unlike any other. It was looking at 
almost a young schoolboy in, in, in the energy, and he would say, and boy, Dan, wasn't that wine good tonight? And of course, we would all smile and laugh and have a quick drink at the Glidden house, and then he'd be off to bed. And so, in tribute to Henry and, and with the memories that I have of these evenings, I, have, I think it's fitting that uh, his family honored Henry with a memorial service, of course, at the end of May following his passing. Our law school honored Henry in September. And not all, while many of you participated in, the event, in that event, many of you were here, we just thought that we would, again, pause in the present to show a few clips of that event uh, and remember what the individual that created this conference. And with that, we'll now turn it over to the video. I'm Bob Ross. In May 2009, the law school lost a real treasure with the passing of longtime faculty member Henry King. You could see that stumble ahead, one foot ahead of the other in life, or you could keep your eyes on the stars. You could dream dreams of a better world. In September 2009, we hosted a special event to honor the legacy of this incredible humanitarian who had been a prosecutor at Nuremberg, chief counsel for the Agency for International Development, honorary counsel of Canada to Northeast Ohio, and director of our candidate U.S. law <coughs> for nearly 30 years. This short video contains a few minutes of highlights from that evening, where former students, colleagues, administrators, practitioners, government officials, and an international prosecutor told personal stories of the impact that Henry made on their lives, the law school, the community, and the world. The United States of America tries to defend their hard milk from the commission of war crimes and crimes against humanity. The link which, which he helped to draw in this prosecution of General Milch between the economic exploitation of people and violation of human rights norms represented a major breakthrough for our understanding of the notion of responsibility and culpability for human rights abuse. I walked through the ruins of Nuremberg and I said, I'm going to dedicate my life to the prevention of this. It was about law as an alternative to war and the possibility that building on Nuremberg that could be part of the progress that the world would make. Henry King was a passionate supporter of the International Humanitarian Law Dialogues and he would come on the table. The spirit of Nuremberg lives. Every time, the spirit of Nuremberg lives. Henry was the quintessential irresistible force. Henry wanted something to get done, by God it got done. During Henry's tenure, the House unanimously passed a resolution from the section supporting the establishment of the International Criminal Court. We have the American dream, which becomes a reality in the business world. Let the American dream become a reality in the international political world. For those of us who pursue justice on behalf of the victims of human rights violations, Henry King is a magnificent role model. His accomplishments remind us of a time of far greater confidence in public service and in public servants as a force for improving the world. We have to sell young people on the idea that it's the substance, it's the concern of your future persons that are going to be here on the planet. Our students, our staff, and our faculty have had the privilege of working side by side with a man who lived and shaped an unforgettable part of history. Dad's love of the law school's student body was intense, and each week he'd call me with a kind of morning after review in which he'd crow about the students' interest and enthusiasm, the depth of their curiosity, and the perspicacity and braininess of their many inquiries. I loved Henry's attachment to his dearest students, the opportunities he created for them to learn and grow by his side. From Dan Yusko's experience in the Canada U.S. Law Institute to Theophrastus, whom he took to the Rome Conference. He never lectured me. He served as a constant reference on the practice of law, which continued upon my return from Malta throughout law school in private practice and during my time as an international criminal lawyer in the Hague and in Tanzania. It's deeply fitting that the name of Henry T. King, Jr. be associated with a school my father loved and with a center whose work he deeply believed in. 
I wear several titles and several hats around here, but the one that I'm going to be most fond and proudest of for now on is director of the Henry King War Crimes Research Office. Henry King would often say that his most important contributions were the institutions that he helped create and build. These include the Canada-U.S. Law Institute and its annual conference, which we've renamed the Henry T. King Canada-U.S. Law Conference. They also include the Niagara Mood Court Competition and the War Crimes Research Office, which we've renamed the Henry T. King War Crimes Research Office. Henry's fondest hope was that these institutions would flourish long after his passing. Henry also dreamed of raising more scholarship money to help us attract and launch the next generation of leaders in international law. Your generous contribution to our newly established Henry T. King Jr. International Law Studies Honorary Fund will help us fulfill Henry's dream. so much that he wouldn't love the fact that there were all of these new institutions and conferences that carry his name. And I think he would really like the fact that we have named this next honor in, after him. And so Dan has asked me to uh, present this uh, to George Brown, who is the field representative of uh, George Voinovich, um, our distinguished senator who also uh, is a first son of Cleveland, a mayor of our great city here, um, governor of our great state, and now um, a wonderful, wonderful senator and has been such a friend to this institute. And so let me read this and present this to you. Um, it says, first of all, I'll show everybody. The Canada-United States Law Institute at Case Western Reserve University School of Law and the University of Western Ontario Faculty of Law present the Henry T. King Jr. Award to United States Senator George V. Voinovich. Coosley established the Henry T. King Jr. Award in 2009 to recognize individuals and entities that capture Henry's spirit of lifetime advocacy for Canada-U.S. relations, the rule of law, and public service. Coosley honors and thanks Senator Voinovich for more than four decades of service to Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, and the United States. Coosley further honors the Senator's tireless championing of Canada-U.S. relations and the Great Lakes region. Co-chair of the Senate Great Lakes Task Force, he introduced the Great Lakes Legacy Act of 2008 to clean up contaminated areas, and he opposed operation of the Devil's Lake Outlet. He has been a strong proponent for strengthening homeland security while supporting Canada and U.S. trade and economic interests, as evidenced by his work on the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. Of greatest significance, the Senator believes in dialogue and has been a long-standing member of the Canada and U.S. Interparliamentary Group. This ninth day of April, 2010, it is our honor to present this to you to give to the Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael, for uh, presenting me uh, with this award to, to present to Senator Voinovich. Unfortunately, uh, Senator Voinovich is uh, out of country on some international travel, um, but uh, I know that uh, Dan is working with our office, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, Senator Voinovich receiving this himself at uh, some sort of ceremony uh, in, in the near future. So uh, I ensure that uh, 
to, to make sure that Senator Voinovich receives this, and I know he's uh, looking forward to uh, receiving it uh, in person in Washington, D.C. as well. So uh, on behalf of the United States Senator George Voinovich, it's a, a real honor to be able to be here uh, at uh, such a, a great program and uh, for such a uh, wonderful man like Henry King to be able to receive this on uh, his behalf. So uh, to Case Western Reserve and to the uh, Institute here, thank you very much on behalf of Senator Voinovich. say just a few words about the pamphlet that everybody has in front of them. Um, this is the Henry T. King Jr. International Law Studies Honorary Fund uh, pamphlet and in it you'll find your own copy of the DVD and we hope that you will play it again whenever you want to think of Henry and share it with other people. We also have this available on the internet you can give people the website if you want. Um, there's descriptions of Henry's bio and the things that he meant to all of us and the institutions that he helped build. Henry, before he passed on, was very concerned about making sure that the Canada U.S. Law Institute, the Niagara Competition, this conference, and all the other things that it did would live on past his lifetime. And as you know, because he probably called each and every one of you um, to try to fundraise, that he was a tireless fundraiser, and he knew that nobody was going to have the moral authority that he did to twist your arm to constantly get the money. And so what he wanted us to do was create a fund that would endow the Canada U.S. Law Institute endow this conference, endow the Niagara competition, and endow scholarships in his name so that he could really, we could launch the next generation of Henry Kings that would make a difference in the world. And that's not going to happen unless everybody really that's in this room and everybody you know, and everybody you know who knows somebody who was touched by Henry or cared about Henry or believed in what Henry believed in will, will give money to this. And so I recently um, opened up my checkbook and gave something that was 10 times more than I'd ever given to any charity. My wife is still worried about how we're going to pay the taxes this year. Um, but I, I want you all to please, please, uh, hopefully, you know, right now while you're in the giving spirit, think about filling this envelope with a check. If not, go home and, and think about doing it. But this is part of the future of this organization. It, it's only going to survive and grow and on the, the strengths that Henry gave us and the new strengths under its new leadership if you all help us with this. And so having seen his, his video and thinking about this, I, I ask you to please help us out. Um, with that, I turn this back over to Dan and I thank you all. Thank you, Michael. And as Michael mentioned, one, our, our Henry K. T. King International Law Studies Fund is designed to promote our international law programs, uh, including the collaboration in our case global programs between the Canada U.S. Law Institute, our Frederick K. Cox International Law Center, as well as our Institute for Global Security Law and Policy, touching on all of these areas. But as you know, as I've repeated on several occasions today, that our institute is inherently bilateral. It's jointly owned by two universities, and it's only fitting that our colleagues at the University of Western Ontario Faculty of Law are carrying Henry's legacy forward, carrying this institute forward, and it's my great pleasure to introduce our colleague from the University of Western Ontario Faculty of Law, our Canadian director, Kai Connery, who will discuss with you the ways that we are carrying this forward with our friends in London, Ontario. Kai. Uh, Dan, it's uh, a great pleasure and a great honor to be uh, here this evening to uh, recognize the memory of Henry T. King. Henry was somebody who um, I became acquainted with uh, right when I became a, uh, a junior uh, faculty member at Western about a decade ago. And uh, he was somebody who struck me as a person of tremendous vision. He had a vision not only for his country, but for our countries together that is for Canada and the United States as countries, as neighbors, as lar the largest uh, representatives of the largest trading partners uh, in the world. He knew that we shared a common past in many respects, but that at times we might diverge. 
And it was important for us to continue a pattern and a tradition of discussion and debate about our respective paths. Henry was tremendously committed and uh, tremendously uh, aware of the possibility that um, we needed to continue to work together, to discuss together, to think together, and to work together. And despite the fact that this age seems to be more interconnected than ever before, we are um, in some ways curiously distant from each other. And that's why conferences of this type and activities of the type that are uh, managed by this institute continue to be so very important. And so in thinking about all of these things, we at the University of Western Ontario Faculty of Law have um, continued to work to create a funding base for the future. Um, in the next couple of days, uh, we'll be creating a, a university-wide Canada-US Institute which will look after joint programming across the university campus on the issue of Canada-U.S. relations. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, the legacy of Henry King will continue to be a strong part of that. Next Tuesday in Washington, we'll have a series of events, uh, both at the, the Woodrow Wilson School, uh, Washington campus, and at the Canadian Embassy, uh, to kick <coughs> off um, the activities of the Institute and also to, uh, to recognize the terrific contribution and the legacy of Henry King. We're very proud to be part of this institute and we continue to uh, look forward to working together with it for many, many years to come. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to, before we conclude on Ray's three points, I, I wanted to do a quick round of, of introductions for some folks that have uh, just come to the room. We've done introductions throughout the day, but first I do want to acknowledge the arrival uh, earlier today of one of our executive committee members who was uh, announced earlier, and that would be Don Cameron of Troutman Sanders in Washington, D.C., who I just put on the spot. Uh, hey. uh, <laughs> but Don joins uh, Rick Newcomb, seated there, as well as Dick Cunningham, Michael Robinson, Jim McElroy, and Larry Herman, and of course, Selma Lessenberg and our new co-chairs, uh, the Honorable Jim Peterson and the Honorable Jimmy Blanchard, as uh, Jim Peterson calls him, uh, in leading our institute uh, forward. And to all of you, I thank you for your leadership as, as we continue forward, as well as our assist Associate Dean for Development here at Case Western Reserve University School of Law, Joyce Garibrandt, who is JT, as she's known uh, uh, colloquially in the family and on the faculty who many of you will have the opportunity to meet in coming days. Now, I, I saw the only time I ever use notes to speak, Michael throws them in the back. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Henry's greatest legacy, of course, are represented by the individuals in this room. Henry touched all of our lives in a number of, way, number of ways. I know a number of us, uh, including this individual standing before you, have contacted Henry both in the high points, and Henry was the best of friends that when you were on your highs, Henry shared those with you and truly had true enjoyment that someone else was experiencing success. I remember when a, some one individual in this room had experienced a great verdict in a case. Henry was like, Dan, did you? He called me, Dan, did you see this? Oh, we have to call him and, and get him to join the Institute. But that was, <laughs> that was not typical Henry. But as, a, as with any great friend, family member. Henry was also there in the times of trials and tribulations that we all experience in our lives. And I, as I look around at so many people I know, as we've been there, we all gave that Henry King a call. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Or as Rick mentioned last night when we were making career decisions to call Henry, and he was the shoulder that we all leaned on. And there are legions of individuals uh, that have come through this law school and beyond that Henry touched. And, and as we look out today, Henry's legacy not only rests in this institute and with all of us in this room, but with a particular set, which is our students uh, that are here today as we carry forward exposing successive generations not only to the importance of Canada-U.S. Relations, Canada relations to the international relationship, but also instilling that spirit of professionalism and collegiality that Henry captured and spread uh, throughout our generations. And with that, I do want to thank a special group of people that will be leaving these hallowed halls 
of Case Western Reserve in just a few weeks. It's our third year, as they're the group that's probably the most intoxicated in the room, knowing that they're third year law students. They're pretty uh, Checked out, first of all, to, uh, I'm sorry, I left my copy up there, but all of you received, when you registered today, a copy of our Canada United States Law Journal. Uh, the next issue of the journal will be celebrating uh, the work that Henry King did along with Brad Smith and Louis Sohn and a number of others on the ABA, CBA, Barra Mexicana joint working group uh, for the settlement of international disputes and really examining the Canada-U.S. relationship. And the group that led that is, uh, I'm looking around the room, but first of all, our editor-in-chief was Carl Brooker, Mandy Keith, who's in the back there, Kinshi Cow who was our publication editor, and Steve Dier, who many of you met yesterday as our production editor. As we look toward next year, uh, there's a team here, and for those of you that have been speaking, these will be the folks that you'll be getting emails from pretty much every day uh, as, as you publish, uh, as we get. Uh, once the transcripts here from our great reporting, court reporting service at Mazan and Court Reporting, they'll clean up the transcript and pretty much get this to you over the summer and hound you until you get your sites and checks in. But the folks that are doing the work are, of course, Christian Sorensen, our new editor-in-chief, Sarah Antonucci, who many of you have met, Matt Dodd, Alexis Parker, Megan Bialen, and Matt Bechtold. So these are names that will become familiar to you. And as you've undoubtedly witnessed throughout, these are the folks that are carrying the microphones, driving uh, Governor Blanchard and others to the airport in a hailstorm today. And these are the individuals that really carry forward the legacy that we have. Now, Jim Peter, as we wind down, right at 8.15, in a perfect Henry fashion, but as we wind down, Jim Peterson last night, in discussing the Canadian demographic issues, suggested that as we go to bed that we think about how to give back to our country and encouraging increasing the birth rate in that, uh, <laughs> and that read the transcript. But, uh, <laughs> But Henry King had a famous phrase. But then he was thinking of you. <laughs> I don't know where to go from there. But, uh, We're all too old. <laughs> but uh, Henry King had a famous phrase that he would use on many occasions. It's one that I think of on most nights before I fall asleep. Is that Henry, as, as David Crane mentioned, the other David Crane, as you would, Henry would stand at the podium and slam at the desk, but he would always conclude every speech with, you must reach for the stars. And one day I said, Henry, why do you always say that? I don't quite understand. And he said, Dan, if you reach for the stars, you gain everything. If you don't reach, what do you lose? And just land back on the ground. And I thought to myself, that's the way to live life. And so with that, that's the lesson from Henry King. And as we move forward as an institute, as well as individuals, I encourage all of us to carry forward that legacy as we reach for the stars and go forward. And with that, enjoy the camaraderie and professionalism of this weekend, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Thank you.